morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you're watching us from. Welcome to Mavuno Church Online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is such a privilege to be doing church with you. Wherever it is you are, get yourself ready to worship and to praise our God who is deserving of all the praise and honor that we can give Him. Rise yeah. to your feet. If you're in bed, shake that off. Get ready to praise and worship God. Are you guys ready? Ready. Are you ready on this side? Ready. Man, you ready? Let's go. Put your hands together, everybody. Here we go! The Jesus power is the highest power in the universe, so we celebrate our great God. Are we G? Show us how. My Jesus power, super power, all other power, powerless. My Jesus power, super power, all other power, powerless. My Jesus power.
that our God is all powerful. He is all powerful, He is loving, He is faithful. So our response as His children is to trust Him. There's nothing that He can't do. Hear me when I say to you today, Mavuno Online, there is nothing that the Lord cannot do. There is no situation that is beyond His power. So you can trust Him. You can trust Him. You can surrender to Him. He is a loving Father. So I'm going to invite you to join us today in our song of surrender, where we say, God, we trust You. We, trust we are in awe you. of You. We trust You, Jesus. Yes. Sing, Father. Father, here I am once again. Wonder in all amazement, so grateful for all that you do. Father, here I am once again to pour out my heart in worship, in total surrender to you. All that I need. 
God, you will take all of us. We acknowledge you as Lord of all in our lives. We put you in your rightful place. And it's in Jesus' name we are praised, prayed, and worshiped. And all God's people said, Amen. a God who is in charge of history. You need to understand we live in biblical times, the pandemics that we're seeing and that we will see, the wars that we're seeing and we will see, the efforts by governments across the world to control their citizens that we will see and we are seeing. And they are coming. War to you, O Lord, when your king or your leader is a child. A child cannot experience fruitfulness so such leaders keep people as children also the people who know their god shall be strong and do exploits around you give them those opportunities that will show you who they are don't hold on to responsibilities some of the responsibilities you give your, your disciples may not do them as well as you but they will test them and help them become what they're supposed to be as your leaders we now officially launch the 52 books of the class of 2023 <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you're watching from. It's such a joy to be in God's house today. What an incredible time of worship. And thank you so much, worship team, for leading us before our Father uh, to be able to worship, to be able to recognize that we didn't create ourselves, that God created us. And we uh, lift Him up and we worship Him because He deserves all our praise and glory. Hey, my name is Pastor M. Moredi Wanjao, Senior Pastor of Mavuno Church. Uh, it's such a joy every Sunday to come uh, and be with you as we worship God together. Wherever in the world you are, whatever country you're in, whether you're watching it with uh, a group of people, I know there's several. A big shout out to all our watch parties. Uh, we've got different people watching in different parts of the world together. We're so excited you're here. Some of you may just be watching on the road or in the office or somewhere else. Uh, maybe you're even watching this from hospital. Wherever you are, we are so glad that you're able to worship with us today. And hey, as we are, are, are celebrating, yesterday was an amazing day for us at Mavuno. We had our last gathering of the year. The gathering is a time when all the Mavuno disciples are the people who are, consider themselves followers of Jesus in this church. We come together and we just learn from God's word. And the last two days have been an amazing amazing time of just listening to God, seeing God do amazing things in our, in our, in our church. Uh, so I just want to uh, just commend every single one of you who was able to come. I think you'll be able to find the videos on YouTube for those of you who weren't able to come. And also we celebrated uh, the graduation of what we call our Fearless Institute or our, our Leadership Bootcamp. And we had a bunch of people from all the different Mavuno campuses uh, uh, graduating. We even had uh, people from different countries where Mavuno is uh, graduating. It's a one-year experience, a leadership experience that helps equip you to be a marketplace multiplying Christian. 
And so if you're interested in being part of the next class, uh, please sign up for that. Uh, we would love to work with you. It starts in January and goes through a whole year. Meet once, uh, just one once a month. Uh, but there's different assignments in that. So if you know Jesus as your savior, you're part of this church, you'd like to be equipped for the next level of leadership, uh, this may just be the thing uh, that you need to find out more about. So I'll use the link on the screen and just find out more about this. Hey, if you're watching this as well as a, as a watch party, you, there's several of you watching it together, uh, please use the link as well on the screen and uh, tell us where you're watching from and who you are. We just like to know where you are so we can be praying for you. And by the way, even if you're watching alone, you can still use the link. Uh, tell us who you are. We would just love to pray for you uh, this coming week. So as we prepare ourselves for God's word, we also want to worship Him with our tithes and offerings. Uh, and I, there's a scripture that I want to read for us. It's in 2 Corinthians 8, 12. And it's a, it's a powerful scripture for me when it comes to our giving. And here's what it says. It says that for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I love this scripture. It was given by the Apostle Paul to one of the churches that he had begun, the church in, uh, in the city of Corinth. And I love the fact that he sets this tone about what our giving to God is all about. Giving to God is not about guilt. It's not about giving what you don't have. Uh, it's not about giving with a, a grudging heart because you're forced to give. He talks about the willingness being there. And, and it says our gift becomes acceptable because of the willingness of our hearts. And I just rejoice in all of you who've given so willingly. Uh, members of this church who've given so willingly over the years. And I thank God because I know many of you have experience and have testimonies of God's blessings over your families, over your businesses, as you've just sought to be generous to God's work. And my prayer for us is that out of our willingness, you know, we don't give what we don't have. Uh, when we tithe, we give a percentage of what God has already blessed us with. And what we are doing as we do that is we are declaring that, oh, everything I have belongs to God in the first place. He's my blesser, not my salary, not my business. And I trust in Him. As we enter into these uh, uncharted economic times, I believe that our giving is not based on uh, our source of wisdom, on the wisdom that we have, on the strength that we have. It's given out of the faith that we have. We trust in a God who is not bound by the economic times we're in. He has his own way of blessing us regardless of what we're walking through. So I want to just pray for us as we prepare for God's word and even as we give uh, towards God's work. The, the information for how you can give is on the screen. Uh, many of you already know uh, and have done this for a long time. Father, thank you so much for your church. Thank you for every single person who's watching this today, who's part of this gathered church. Uh, some are watching it in living rooms together. Some are watching it in different places. But I thank you that together we are your church. And I thank you because your word has told us when the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable. Thank you because of the willing givers of this church. I pray that, Father, even as we give towards your work, you will bless greatly the work of your hands through us. That we will see your kingdom advancing in our generation because you entrusted us with this responsibility. And we use the wealth you blessed us towards your work. I want to pray for any who's here who's not able to give because they're out of a job, because they have no income, and Father God, there's some who are in that place where they're just praying desperately, Lord, provide for me. I pray that every single one of you who is trusting God for a job, who's trusting God for provision, for business uh, opportunity, I pray in Jesus' name that the Lord himself will provide all your needs. Uh, not only so that you can, you, can be, you, can be pr you can prosper and be a blessing to your family because that is God's desire for you, but also so that you can be generous towards the work of God. I pray, Father, provide their needs. Uh, make a way for them. Do a miracle, Lord. Do things that only you can do so that, Lord, your people will be provided for and that your work will prosper. And so I bless you, God's people. For as, we, as we receive God's word now, Lord, as we come ready to receive your word, I pray that, Lord, you would feed us spiritually. I pray that you'd give us a word that would change our lives and help us to become everything that you desire us to be. And so Mavuno Church, you who is trusting God for a job, who's trusting God for provision, for business uh, opportunity, I pray in Jesus' name that the Lord himself will provide all your needs. Uh, not only so that you can, you can, be, you can, be pr you can prosper and be a blessing to your family because that is God's desire for you, but also so that you can be generous towards the work of God. I pray, Father, provide their needs. 
uh, make a way for them. Do a miracle, Lord. Do things that only you can do so that, Lord, your people will be provided for and that your work would prosper. And so I bless you, God's people. For as, we, as we receive God's word now, Lord, as we come ready to receive your word, I pray that, Lord, you would feed us spiritually. I pray that you'd give us a word that would change our lives and help us to become everything that you desire us to be. And so, Mavuno Church, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Wow. Greetings, church family. I'm so honored to be bringing God's word to you today. Uh, we are uh, going through a sermon series in November called The Invitation, Your All Access Pass to a Life of Influence. And so far, we've learned that the greatest desire, I mean, many people in our culture, they desire to become influencers but it's based on the fact that we have a much deeper fundamental human need. Every one of us was created to influence others. And we've come to see that the most influential person in all of history, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, that he desired all his followers to become greater influencers than him. And so we're looking at four invitations to greatness, four invitations to influence. And the first we saw was an invitation to faith. Uh, God wants to make your life so attractive that you will influence many people for eternity. Uh, and then we also looked at the second invitation, uh, the invitation to family. And we say this, that God prepares you for influence by putting you in a spiritual family. Now, if you missed any of these uh, messages, you can find them on YouTube, mavunochurch.org. Uh, and uh, we would love for you to just walk along with us as we delve into these invitations that Jesus has for every single one of us. Now, today we want to look at the third invitation along your pathway to influence, and it's an invitation to following. Uh, I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 8, uh, verse 34 to 38. We're going to be reading Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. If you have your Bible, you can turn in there as well. I'm going to display it on the screen as well. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. And this is what it says. It says... Then he called to the, the crowds to him along with his disciples and he said, whoever wants to be my disciple, this is Jesus speaking, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever wants to lose their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. You know, the book of Mark, it outlines for us the process that Jesus went through when he took his disciples uh, uh, into this relationship with him and the different invites that he invited them along that journey with him. As we saw, he invited them into a journey of faith where he recruited the most unlikely people to enter into a relationship with him. And then later on, he invited them to become members of his spiritual family and to share life with him. But this time, when he felt they were ready, he raised the bar with the next invite. And he challenged them to deny themselves, to take up their cross, and to follow him. Now, what do these things mean? What, what do this, how does this invite work? The first thing, to deny themselves. Deny themselves had to do with letting go of control of every aspect of their lives. It meant they would no longer be the ones in the driver's seat. They're not the ones in charge. They would actually be ceding control to someone else. It's like you've been driving your car and then uh, all of a sudden you realize it's not your car. Somebody else owns that car and you give the keys to that person. And from then on, they're the ones who drive. They're the ones who decide where that car goes. And, and that's what denying yourself is. It's voluntarily choosing to give up control over your life. You're not the one who is in charge anymore. And then number two, to take up their cross had to do with embracing God's plan for their lives going forward. So, so how do I put this? Let me compare the two. If denying yourself is about giving up your own way, then taking up your cross is about receiving God's way. So denying myself, I no longer have my way. Somebody else is in charge. But then taking up your cross is saying, who's in charge? God is. And now from now on, his way is my way. So, so when I take up my cross, it means that I listen to God in every decision. If I'm in the office, before I make a decision, I listen to what he's saying. And I choose not what I want, but what he wants. So, for example, if you remember when Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he was about to be arrested. And his prayer, very famous prayer, Luke chapter 22, verse 42. He says, Father, if you're willing, take this cup away from me. He's saying, this is what I desire. I don't want this thing that's about to happen to me. And then he says this famous words. He says, yet not my will, but yours 
be done. What does that mean? It means that to take up your cross, it means to fully believe that God's plan for you is better than your plan for yourself. And it means that, you know what, I, 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 I don't just mean, I don't just think of this mentally. I don't just have this belief mentally. I actually believe this because it's true. God's plan for me will always be better than my plan for myself. And then that's deny yourself. So, so deny yourself, let go of control. Take up your cross equals to embrace God's plan. But these two steps are preparing us for the final part of the invitation. Number three, which is follow me and follow me. Following has to do with obedience. As the disciples now had given up control over their lives, and as they had accepted God's plan was better, the natural outcome would be a life of moment by moment, minute by minute, obedience to Jesus' commands and instructions. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know, it's one thing to say you love God. It's one thing to believe deeply that you love God. But true love for God is shown through day-to-day -day obedience to God's commands. So Jesus is inviting them into a life of obedience. But let's, let's, let's make this a little practical for us today. I mean, how, what does it mean to live in obedience to God's commands? Jesus' final command to his disciples uh, his, his, his commission to them, we call it the Great Commission. And by the way, it's one that many Christians are either ignorant of uh, or they just, we, don't, we just don't obey it. Uh, it was Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. It says, uh, then Jesus came to them and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. What does he say? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So, so in a nutshell, Jesus' invitation to his spiritual family and it's his invitation by extension to us as well, his modern day followers, it's this. I want you to stop to quit living for yourselves. I want you to embrace the plan that I have for you that is better than your plan for yourself. And my plan for you, the reason I put you on this earth, it has to do with you making disciples across the whole world and doing with others what I have done with you. That's what Jesus' invitation is to his disciples. So it's about making disciples. Now, what is making disciples? This assignment has two parts. The first, he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that basically has to do with bringing people to faith in Jesus. In the same way that you have received the invitation to faith, you too must align your life around offering that same invitation to others. In other words, the job you have, it's an opportunity that God has given you to invite people to faith. The family you have, it's an opportunity for you to invite people to faith. The, the wealth that he's given you, the school he's put you in, all those are just opportunities that God has given you so that you can offer and extend the invitation of faith to those around you. That's the first part of the assignment. The second part of the assignment was teaching them to obey everything that Jesus had commanded them. Now, I want you to notice a very strange thing about this one. Uh, and this one is not one that may not be very obvious at first glance. Jesus didn't tell them to teach their disciples, the disciples to teach their disciples to obey the law and the prophets, which is what he should have done, you know, because these were the Jewish scriptures of the time. You'd have said, teaching them to obey everything that is in the scriptures. But he says, no, no. Teach them to obey what I have commanded you. He told them to teach their disciples to obey him. Now, of course, this may not strike you as very strange, especially if you believe that Jesus was God. <laughs> because obeying him and obeying the scriptures should be one and the same thing, right? So, so this shouldn't really strike us as strange. But here's the interesting thing to notice, how the disciples apply this. When it was the apostles, uh, Paul's turn to give his, uh, an assignment to his own disciples, when it was his time to give this assignment to his own disciples, in the church of Corinth, he said to them in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So Paul is, he didn't say follow Jesus' example, he said follow my example. The same verse, it reads, and you should imitate me as I imitate Christ. Elsewhere, he wrote to one of his disciples, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and he said, and the things you've heard me say, in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. What Paul is saying is this. He's saying, just as I have sought to follow Jesus, you need to seek to follow me. In other words, as my disciples, the way that you will learn to follow Jesus is through learning to follow me. Live like me. Observe my life. Imitate me. Follow God like me. Learn to pray from the way I pray. 
Learn to see God from the way I see God. Learn to, 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 to manage your life the way you see me managing my life. Model your life on the way you see me live. As I follow Christ, you will become like him. That's radical, isn't it? It's like, it's like many people say, I never saw that. But it's, it's what's there. It's what, it's, this is how the Jews believed or understood discipleship to be. That you became a disciple by following someone else. And here's a radical thing that I'm leading to. And it's one that I hope you don't miss. That the radical truth about becoming a disciple is that the way we learn to follow Jesus is through learning to follow someone else who is following Jesus. What a shock. Yeah? <laughs> That's the essence of discipleship. It's about teaching you, teaching people to follow, Christ, follow you as you follow Christ. That's the way discipleship was done in the Jewish culture. You know, the, the, the kind of the Christianity we have today is much more based on the Greek culture which basically is about doing classrooms. <laughs> it's like putting people in a Bible study and teaching them to read God's word and then leaving them. That's not how it, the, 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 the Jews understood discipleship. Discipleship was about following somebody, imitating their life and becoming like them. Instead of, inviting, instead of just inviting people, doing a Bible study with people, it's about inviting people to become a part of your life so that they observe you and they imitate your own obedience to God. They see how you live out that obedience in every part of your life. Whether it's your career, whether it's your finances, whether it's your entertainment and what you watch, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your political engagement, you name it. As they watch you and as they see how your obedience to God is reflected in all these areas, they start to follow you and in the process of becoming more like you, they become more like Jesus. And so that's a third invite that Jesus calls us to in the life of influence. That we follow Jesus by following another person who is following Jesus. Wow. Come on, somebody. I mean, many of us, yeah, we grew up with that very individualistic view of faith. We'd say that faith is about me and Jesus. As long as I pray, and you've seen this around you, haven't you? As long as I pray and read the Bible, as long as I sincerely believe in God, then I can follow Jesus on my own. I don't need nobody else. And it's common to hear people saying, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the church. I don't go to church. Uh, but you know, here's the thing. Just like you cannot parent or bring yourself up in the biological world. Nobody brings themselves up. Uh, you need a parent. You need somebody to bring you up. You need somebody to feed you when you're a little child. So in the spiritual realm, you need to be parented or disciple. That's a Christian word. By another human being in order for you to become everything that God wanted you to be. And ultimately, in order to live the life of influence you're created for, you need also to lead your own disciples. So it's not just about being disciple, but it's about learning to, so that you can also disciple others. So listen to me. If you forget everything else I say today, don't forget this one phrase. We follow Jesus by following another person who is following Jesus. That's what I want to teach you today. You know, my, my, my um, wife, Carol, and I, we consider ourselves very, I wouldn't say lucky. We were blessed to have had this experience. As young Christians, we joined a new church, we we're college students, and we joined along with some of our friends. And with that group, we became very good friends to the, the young pastor and his wife. And we had the opportunity to observe how they loved and served God, how they did ministry, how they related with each other, how they looked, brought up their children, how they managed their finances. You know, over the next few years, we ate many meals in their home. We babysat their children. And even though we didn't realize it at that time, God was using them to shape our understanding of faith, our understanding of marriage, our understanding of parenting, our understanding of finances. A whole, a whole lot of important life areas were being shaped just by being around them. And though we didn't have the language for it at the time, we had actually become their disciples. We were following them as they followed Jesus. You know, at that same church, we again, we met many other people, older people, who became very important disciples to us. Uh, they taught us so many things. And as I look back years later, I can truthfully say that we would not be anywhere near we were, where we are spiritually as followers of Jesus had we not had the privilege of following people who are following Jesus. There are many struggles that, they, that, that we, we, we didn't have to go through because we learned from their experience. There are many things that many people go ar around us went through that we didn't go through just because we are following somebody who was following Jesus. Now, someone might look at me and say, Pastor, I'm not so sure about this following another human being thing. <laughs> you know, I'd willingly follow if it was Jesus himself or the Apostle Paul. But, don't, but, 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 but <laughs> this thing about following another human, hum, humans have issues. And, 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 but I want to say to you this, 
I hope you realize that the same was true. The same was said about Jesus when he was here on earth. In Mark, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, it records to us the reaction of people in Jesus' town when he preached there. Our people said, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? <laughs> and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And all his sisters with us? In other words, isn't this just a guy like us? And where did this man get all these things? And the Bible says, and they took offense at him. I mean, they rejected Jesus because they felt he was just another person. I'm sure if they would not have reacted that way if the prophet Elijah had resurrected and spoken to them directly, or Moses himself would have spoken to them, they'd have been like, ah, Moses will follow. But who is this Jesus guy? Uh, this is just a boy from our town. And so the Bible says they refused to follow him. And Jesus couldn't even do any miracles because to them he was just another human being. They, couldn't, they refused to follow a human being. But fortunately, the disciples got it. They chose to follow Jesus and the rest, as we've seen, was history. Now somebody may be asking, but pastor, but what if I follow someone and they lead me astray? What if I follow somebody and I, 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 I didn't even know that, but they're a cult leader. <laughs> Isn't that how cults begin, by the way? It's like people just follow guys who are completely lost and they're, 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 their job is just to distract people and take them straight to hell. I mean, what if I follow somebody and then they just start doing their own things? I think to answer that question, I'd go back to Paul's words again in 1 Corinthians 11.1 1, because he says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You know, Paul invited his disciples to follow him. But his words also instituted a very important boundary because what he's saying is they should follow his example only as long as he was following the example of Christ. Listen to me. If the leader you're following asks you to do something that is in, in contradiction with God's word, then obedience to God must always come first. And that's why at Mavuno Church, we're so keen to ensure that all of us are reading the scripture. We have a scripture reading uh, plan that we go through uh, the whole church uh, in the year where you're reading the scriptures for yourself, hearing what God is saying to you. And actually, even as we go into the next year, we're going to be doing the same because we do this every year. We want everyone to read the Bible many times through and understand God's word, what God is saying to you. So that's, that's our purpose. It's so that anytime you ever see your leaders, ask you to do something that the Bible says you shouldn't do, you'll be able to say very quickly, uh-uh, I follow you only as I follow Christ, as you follow Christ. There's a great example in the scripture in Acts chapter 4. The Jewish spiritual leaders, they commanded the disciples to cease and desist from speaking about Jesus in public. They were like, you can't do this anymore. And you know, those days, the Jewish, uh, the leaders were the ultimate spiritual authority in Israel and their words were to be obeyed without question. But when you read the disciples' response, you realize that even though they were respectful, they were very firm that they could not do that. And they said, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? You be the judges. In other words, we're not going to disrespect you. But listen, if you tell us to do something that God is telling us not to do, or vice versa, we will always follow God and not a human being. Uh, we only follow our spiritual leaders as they follow Christ because there's a hierarchy of authority. And God always comes first. And that's a spiritual principle that we must always observe as God's people. So, so we're learning that the life of influence that God created us for requires you to respond to four important invites from Jesus. And the invitation we're learning about today is that we follow Jesus by following another person who is following Jesus. Someone once said that there are only two things that last for eternity. God's word and people. Those are the only two things. Everything else you're going to leave behind. Money, you're going to leave it behind. Your clothes, your shoes, all that. Your job, your reputation, all that you'll leave behind here when you die. Everything else is temporary except God's word and people. Therefore, <laughs> the only way we can invest in what lasts is when we invest our lives to help people according to God's word. That's the only way, that's the only thing that you can have that will actually have eternal influence. This is how we influence people for eternity. This is how we become the influencers Jesus wanted us to be. This is how we participate in the greatest adventure, the greatest thing that God is doing on planet earth today. That's how we become a part of it. Now we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be concluding this series next week in our message. I'd like us to spend some time looking at that final invitation, uh, the inf invitation to fearless influence. Uh, you're going to like that one, I tell you. But, but as I conclude today, let me leave you with two important questions. Two important ways that you can begin to apply God's message. And there are questions you can also discuss in your discipleship when you meet or even after the service for those of you who are watching this in a watch party. The first question, who are you following as they follow Christ? I, basically what that means is who is discipling you? 
Who's the spiritual authority that God has put in your life to help you become like Jesus? And do they know that you see them this way? <laughs> it's important for you to understand, even as you ask that question, you might say that person, but do they even know that they're your disciple, that you're following them? Question number two, uh, who is following you as you follow Christ? Who are you discipling? Who are you sharing all aspects of your life with? So that as they observe you, as they imitate you, they're becoming more like Jesus. And then with, along with that, do they know that you see them this way? Uh, so let's have that conversation about that because, hey, here's what we're talking about. We become more like Jesus by following somebody who is following Jesus. So I want to just conclude right now in prayer. And if you'll allow me to just pray for us as we conclude. Father, I thank you for your people. Thank you for your word. Thank you that this word is so powerful. You asked your disciples to deny themselves, to take up their cross, to follow you, to realize that the things that we think are big are not big. That God's plans for us are far greater than our, plan, your, our plans for ourselves. And to realize that the plan you have for us that you want us to obey, to follow you in, is that path of making disciples who make disciples. Bringing faith to others and helping them to learn to obey the things that you taught us. And Father, the way we do that is by following someone who's following Jesus. And it's also by helping others follow us as we follow Jesus. I pray that Father, we will be disciples as a church. We will not be just Christian converts just people who call themselves Christians. But Father God, we will be disciples, followers of Jesus uh, who are doing the work that you left us here to do. Lord, I love this church. I thank you for every single person here who's a disciple, so every person here who's seeking you seriously. And I pray that Lord, you will help us to be everything you're calling us to be. But Lord, I also pray for anyone here who's in that journey where they're seeking you, hasn't known you yet, has not accepted you in their life. And I pray that Lord, even as they hear this word, that Father, you would change their lives. You would open their eyes to begin to understand that there's a purpose that you called us for. And that purpose is far bigger than anything that we think we could live for. And as I conclude, let me just pray. By the way, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. If you would pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I want to invite you into my life today. Come and be my Savior and my Lord. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and teach me to walk in your ways. From this day forward, I no longer want to live for myself, but I want to live for everything you have for me. And so I am your child, and I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, please let uh, the person who's hosting you in a watch party know. Uh, or you can also send us an email at info at mavunochurch.org. We would love to send you some information, help you to take the next steps to become everything that God created you to be. God bless you. Can't wait to see you next week. Wow, following. So we've always been about discipleship as Mavuno Church and for years that's what we've stood on. But over the last two years, I began to understand it in a completely different way. What happened is that Pastor Emma and Pastor Caro came to us and they said they've, they've, they've begun to understand discipleship in a way that we haven't been practicing. It's what we wanted, but it's not how we were, were practicing it at that time. And they invited us to start following their example together with Pastor Caro. And for me, it was like, Yo, this is strange. But he said, guys, I would like I would not lead you in a hole <laughs> knowingly. And so he started following. He started following his example. He started, uh, 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 you know, uh, eating together with him. We started being closer uh, to him and Pasakaro uh, as a family uh, would. And out of that, I've seen my own life uh, personally change. One of the things that happened to me is that God opened up a global ministry that is already domiciled on Pastor M and Pastor Caro, and it became my uh, inheritance in that sense uh, as well. It became one of the things that I just became. But not just that, he started telling us not just to follow their example as they follow the example of Christ, but to start inviting other people who would follow our example as well. And for Pastor Faith and I, 
Pastor Joe and Nyamu were close by. One of the things that I've learned is to follow someone who is following Christ. And when Pastor Kevin Kilonzi made an invite for us to become family and to follow him, it wasn't easy for me and my husband. I was hesitant, but then we came to a place where we were ready to follow, we were happy to follow. And one of the benefits that I've seen by following Pastor Kevin Kilonzi is actually ease and acceleration. Uh, you know, we planted Mavuno Waka in January and we've experienced ease and acceleration you know, throughout the whole year, but also we've experienced ease and acceleration in our personal lives. And even as that goes on, one of the things that we are required to do is to just invite other people to disciple them. And I invited Jose. I understood how to lead a discipleship group, but following, I struggled with it for a little bit. But I readily accepted Pastor Nyamu's call, and from that I began to understand what following truly is. As I followed her, my leadership grew as I started serving in church, as I continue following Pastor Nyamu, and even my heart for people and my desire to bring out the best in people really, really came out strongly. And now I'm at a place where I've been able to uh, call out other leaders and, 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 and you know, work with them. So I wasn't even going to church as of last year, up until when Pastor Nyamu started following and became obedient and she planted Mavundo Raka and I was invited to the church. And when I joined the church, I started serving. And when I started serving, uh, that is when I started seeing my husband and I invited him, uh, you know, to church and he became obedient also. So this following for me, uh, the biggest benefit for me is that we are now a family on a mission. Both me and my husband are both serving in Maguno Raka. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two talks about and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust them to reliable people who will be qualified to teach others. In a nutshell, what we see there is that how you learn to follow Jesus is by following someone else who actually is following Jesus as well. Be a follower.